Welcome to the Burdekin. We are back on the road and I welcome you today to the heart of agriculture and aquaculture. The Burdekin is well known for its production and processing of sugar. Uh, we have about 8.5 million tons of sugar cane grown here in the area, uh, which results into 1.3 million tons of raw sugar being exported through our port of Townsville. Now, what is exciting about the Burdekin as well, we have four sugar mills here that actually processing the sugar cane that you can see right next to me here, creating jobs and opportunities for this region. That actually means $2.5 billion of economic output that this region produces in sugar alone. But that's not all. For the Burdekin, it's all about agriculture and aquaculture. This is exactly what I'm talking about. There is productivity in the Burdekin, the sugar is rolling into the mill and the processing can start. But the Burdekin is not all about sugar only. It is actually really focused on diversifying from mung beans, soybeans, rice. And we're actually seeing mangoes and, and macadamias growing here as well. So the farmers have always been looking to innovate and also rotate crops. Meeting with the mayor, Lynn McLaughlin, she will talk to us about what's driving her economy. We're going to meet with Dale Last, the state member here, and we are going to meet with some cane growers already diversifying into alternative crops and visit one of my favorite projects, the Regan Aqua project here in the Burdekin, a macroalgae project that is not only helping us to protect the reef, but is actually supporting the growth in aquaculture and agriculture. Welcome to the Burdekin. The future of Northern Australia starts right here. It really is an area that covers agriculture, horticulture, the fisheries and the beef industry. It's the capital of agriculture because we have that water sustainability and we are drought resistant. I've got 186 hectares of fully irrigated land, so everything's full irrigation, so we can basically grow anything that can handle our heat. I do a rotational cropping system, so my fallow management is everything comes out for 18 months. So I do three crops, do a bean, grass, bean rotation. And since implementing that about five years ago, I've seen my sugar yields increase and just the general soil health is, is amazing. Obviously, mung beans uh, is something that the international market is looking for. Uh, is it something you will export or is it something you just trade? Yeah, so we, we deal with just with the grain traders and the, and the processors and then they then export the mung beans. So it goes from here to Sunrise in Brandon. It then gets processed and the farmer, we pay for it to get processed into those bags and then that's it. It gets put into a container and gone. We started this co-op because grain traders and processors come to the district and they don't really know where to go. They go to council a lot and the council will put them on to us. We had an information group of growers that were like-minded and we used to talk to them a lot, whereas now we can sort of offer them something, well, hey, we represent you know 2,000 hectares. Yeah. If you are interested, uh, we can potentially do some trials or new crops, niche markets. How do you address some of the challenges around the Great Barrier Reef? It's unfortunate that we get slammed with regulation, which just really strangles us with green tape. Farmers are naturally the best stewards of the land. We all fish at the reef. We've fished at the reef our whole life. The majority of farmers have got a reef boat. They're always out there. We love the reef. We, our kids grow up on the reef. The Burdekin does it like no other area in Australia when it comes to irrigation and producing crops, sugarcane, of course, and branching out into some of the alternate crops at the moment as well. When you talk about water, there's a really important message here about the need to develop our water infrastructure, our dams right across Queensland for future growth. We believe that these banks, these financial institutions have a social license, an obligation to provide services in these rural and country towns. Insurance, we know that if you live in North Queensland, your insurance premiums are going through the roof and that's not sustainable. If you're an insurance company in Queensland doing business in Queensland, then you should be made to spread the risk. You should be made to provide insurance cover right across the state. JCU Pacific Bio and Council have done the heavy lifting. We've had eight months trial that have shown the positive effects of using the macroalgae to remove the nutrient from the water. And so it's a win-win situation. It's a lesser cost for establishment. It's a lesser cost to operate the facility. And also at the end of it, we also have a product that can be returned back to landowners 
to use on the land. This uh, system is a tertiary treatment for wastewater, uh, where the algae strips out nitrogen and phosphorus out of the water to uh, discharge levels that are really attractive, like at 5 mg nitrogen and 2 mg phosphorus per liter, which is a significant reduction. On top of treating wastewater, the algae uses the sun as an energy source and it also strips out carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. The estimates preliminary at this stage, but probably between 8.5 and $9 million is our, uh, our initial estimate of it. There is some earthworks that has to be done. We think that's a very reasonable investment compared to the cost of a traditional solution, which is probably in the vicinity of $40 million plus. The project is a key project that we are going to take to the federal election because it does tick all the boxes. It protects the Great Barrier Reef, it helps us grow our aquaculture and agriculture industry and with the help of JCU, Burdekin and Regan Aqua have done a fantastic job in upscaling the facility into a trial plant. Now it's time to commercialise the technology.